99 from Horizon Channel 32. Videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob. Check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. Um, first item on the agenda is Notice of Intent 270-0689-48-54 Franklin Street. Map 52, Lot 24 and 25, SNL Homes, LLC. And this is a, a public hearing. Um, it's now opened and being conducted concurrently under the yeah. authority of the Mass Weapons Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing conducted in the following manner. Applicant will present the proposal. Commission will receive reports from administrator uh, technical advisors and other town departments. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. And the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which you should direct to the chair. And when you do, please give your name and address before your comments or questions are presented. Um, hopefully everyone signed in attendance sheet down to the, the corner of the room. And at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the commission, starting on my right. Well, please. David Pinnett. Harry Curtis. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Michael Flynn. Chuck Cheroni, Constitution Administrator. Sure. Hi, Rich Stewart. Uh, Phil couldn't be here tonight. Yeah, that's what uh, He sent a representative of the engineer. But just to uh, fill you in on where we've been and where we're at today, um, we went back and forth with a couple meetings with the town on the basic design of the project using the LID techniques. This plan is a result of meetings with uh, Chuck Planning and the town engineer, so it's a plan we've all agreed to, and Planning Board actually approved this plan Monday night. Um, and as far as the basic drainage layout, we did a hybrid system. We do have a couple of cash basins in the property. Uh, we did add granite curbing, which was a request of the town engineer. What we did was leave two foot openings every 20 feet on the south side of the road that flows to grass whales. Infiltrators. Uh, we ended up with a couple of catch basins in the cul-de-sac area flowing to infiltrators. Uh, they did allow us to go to the 26 feet of pavement, uh, change some of the sidewalk layout to uh, move street trees to the backside and slide the road northerly to make room for the drainage system. Um, that's pretty much it on the drainage piece of it. Uh, another item that came up that we had discussed, I'm sure you guys are already aware of, we agreed to rather than create easements in multiple multiple directions on the parcel is to deed the town a portion of lot three so that in the future if you find a connection to another system or create a walking path you guys will do that on your own and that we would provide an easement on lot four pedestrian easement to access the parcel that would be deeding to the town Kind of the um, where we've been to date. I'm playing very technical questions, Trustee Jacob. Mm -hmm. Answer any stormwater questions? Yes. Was so that 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 large irregular piece that's at the back of Lot Three? That that's going to be all conservation. That's a conservation easement. So this dotted line would create a new property line. Yep. So it would be yes, this parcel. Okay. Get down on parcel. Yeah. Does does that abut Eastway? There is a sliver of land that's privately owned between Eastway and this parcel. And that was one of the uh, issues in granting any kind of trail system. There is no connection at the moment. No. Hmm. So we need to get a, uh, an easement from someone on Eastway. To, uh, to go through, but it is a slight sliver of land, and I've already reached out to yeah. both homeowners over there, and you know, hopefully we'll hear back from them. Uh, I did want you to know that I talked to Ryan uh, Percival, the town engineer, and uh, he had a memo that uh, says that he's uh, comfortable with the drainage layout that's presented on this plan. Thank you. So. 
And again, this, this notice of intent is only for the roadway right. and the drainage. Right. I'm going to go back to that other plan in case you guys want to see. Can you just point out where the catch basins are? We're going to have two in the cul de sac. Mm -hmm. Exterior running to an underground infiltrator, an overflow pipe. Along this portion of the roadway, we have openings in the curb allow it to flow into grass wheels. There's an infiltration bed buried under the grass wheel to pick up any uh, stream storms. And then you have two catch bases at the edge of Franklin that feed into this grass wheel. There is no connection to the town's drainage system. It was proposed at one point. We decided to keep them separate. This roadway is under its own design. The existing catch basin in Franklin is going to move down to the edge of our curb. But it'll still be there. I can't really tell from here, but it's just there. There's no sidewalk, no. It's just a grass wheel at the edge of the road. Correct. This side, the street layout, is 60 foot wide, the pavement was moved north so that this area became the drainage. It's within the right of way. This and that side, line that that line is that that parallels the edge of the road, is that part of the drainage? For the no, on the upper side. No, this is actually a sidewalk. Oh, okay. Comes around to the last driveway. All right. Side. So there is a sidewalk. Yep. Yep. Except on, for, side. on this the lower side from us. Correct. Okay. No, no sidewalk. All right. Yeah. One question. You may have answered this. I apologize. Um, were any trees cut? So when when we cleared the first parcel land, were any trees cut within the hundred foot buffer zone? No, the fence uh, straw walls are put up at the hundred foot. Okay, all right. Thank you. So, Chuck, what is the process from? I apologize, I wasn't at the last meeting, and uh, so I don't know from the the standpoint of the deed versus easement. Um, is that new? Have we was that included as part of? The planning discussion as well, or? Yes, I believe Julie talked to the town manager, assistant town manager, town council, and the renovations that we're aware of, other than working out the language and the actual transaction. Yeah, the transaction. Okay. Well, yeah, so yeah, me and Julie talked to the town manager and presented our plan. Um, so the easement language would be something that we have from other sites, but town council is going to look into this and help us uh, with this, uh, this uh, land purchase. Okay. Or not purchase, but gift. Gift. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's it's not so something it's that's essentially being I, I no we uh, done in a bubble at the conservation commission. No, no. <laughs> we uh we had a meeting with uh, Bob uh no with uh, Gene yep. Delios and um, Bob Lalashow, and uh, both of them thought that uh, it would be fine. Uh, we, I don't know if you brought it to the selectmen yet, but um, we got the approval from Bob to uh, at least begin. Okay, and what would be, assuming the the, the commission is, it seems like it's something that's amenable to that, but assuming the commission is amenable that, what would be the process to, to keep this forward? Would, would this notice of intent have to continue until this was resolved, or? No, we would just, uh, just like over on uh, uh, Arcadia, we would request that this be finalized prior to the prior certificate of compliance. Okay. So. Can I ask a question on this, the, the uh, conservation easement? Is there an if then uh, as to what would happen if there was no connection? What happens to that piece of property that now would be landlocked? There's well, it no would be subject to uh, connecting it to any property. Uh, there's enough land out there just to do a loop trail. Yeah, now we got a nice little loop. It, right. And there is an easement, so you could get back there. I the understand trail. that, but yeah. it would be closed off. From if East it, Way, yes. From East Way. Yeah. But yeah, if it was it closed bad. off from East Way, what happens to it then? Does it revert back to the developer if that doesn't happen? Or? No, no, it's what? separate. It's, it, uh, once it's needed to us, it's, it okay. belongs to the, you know, under the control of the Conservation Commission and including the easement. We've got an easement from that, from the new development it, nice, to a nice big area. Having a connection at Eastway would make it mm -hmm. great. 
this essentially this is why stance. the conversation went this way because we didn't know where the trail easement could end up because we didn't have a confirmation from anybody that had a parcel on East Way to allow us through it. So this gives us the most option, the most future options, and you know we, we can do anything. We can have a loop trail until someone agrees. Now, how do we give? This is your problem. How do we? How does the trail committee fit into this? Do we grant? Like, give you guys a, a permit to create a trail? Yeah. Once the easement is established, or how does that work? Just like any other conservation land at that point, right? Well, we, why don't we ask Will, who's a longtime <coughs> conservation member and trail committee. Excellent. Member trail committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will Finch, uh, as Chuck said, former Comstown member and current um, trails committee member. Um, yeah, so the when a trail easement is, is granted, then you and us, we have a right to, to build a trail on that um, easement under the purview of the Conservation Commission, making sure that we're not having an impact on the resource area. Um, so does the Trails Committee come in under the townwide permit, propose putting in a trail? So yes, because it would right. be a new trail. Right. So it wouldn't it wouldn't come under the, the blanket, um, okay. the townwide um, permit that we operate when we're maintaining existing trails. Yeah. You'd have to make an application for a new trail. Um, okay. And then you can replace every tree. <laughs> right, yeah. Exactly. Um, and you go up, pose it, lay it out, and then somebody comes out and says, yep, yeah, go ahead and build it? Right, we, we flag the route. I mean, and again, this will be a 10-foot easement, so there's not a lot of choices. Um, and I'd also like to make sure I understand that the rear, the lot, um, behind lot three is being donated to the town. That is, is that is not a conservation easement that the town will own. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's distinct from the trail easement that, that accesses that property. Um, and I think there's, there's certainly one advantage is that conservation easements have a way of getting tied up in, in red tape and sometimes aren't <clears throat> um, finalized for years. Um, I think that's an advantage to the developer to just get it off the table. Um, and also, kind of backtracking, I like to <coughs> commend the, the design, with the low impact design with the brakes and the curbing, which allows um, animals to traverse the road and get over the curves a lot more easily. Did I cover the. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. This is it. I'm just going to create. Uh, Parking issue, potential parking issue for people visiting that area on the on Vanetta Lane. I mean, it is a cul-de-sac. Uh, you do have a walking trail system across the street with parking. Right. So I don't think it would be worth adding parking. But the other thing is, I don't think you want the people that live on Vanetta Lane would want six cars parked in, on Lanetta Lane to go and visit that area either. That's right. I mean, a trail like this, it might be a novelty for a while for people to go down there, but usually, I mean, I would suspect the people on Lanetta Lane and trail committee members to be down there the most. Yeah. No one else will probably just park their car to, you know, walk through 500 feet or whatever of, of that trail. Now, if it if it was opened up, it's it's really not for parking. I mean, the whole the thought behind it was to connect neighborhoods, connect the Lenetta, uh, La Netta Lane with Eastway, and um, and and uh, and then into Bear Meadow. So that that's highly walkable. It's a walkable distance, and you can get right over to the Matera Cabin. So there's also, uh, if you can see where the, where the cursor is here, there's an easement. It's a drainage easement right through here. And then beyond it, it doesn't show it on this plan, there's um, conservation land that goes straight out to Haverhill Street. And then across the street where you would come out, if you could get through this drainage easement somehow. Uh, there's conservation land on the other side of the street too. 
So it, it, there's a lot of connectivity right here. It's a, it's a very important uh, spot to, to have this, you know, to have this happen. It, it's really going to, it, if it comes to fruition, it's going to uh, connect a lot of people together and with the Materic Heaven. I guess North Sea just want to. Are there any questions from the community? Okay. I guess, Chuck, were there any other outstanding items that you, you had? No, again, this is, um, we're going to have uh, notices of intent for lot three and four of the houses, and there's only a small portion of the lower half of the cul-de-sac in the 100-foot buffer. Mm -hmm. So this is drainage, you know, and uh, just getting comfortable with the site at this point. So no, there was, you know, had many meetings. Uh, internally with this. So we're very comfortable with it. Yeah. And, and just I'd like to add that um, one of the things we had asked previously was um, a report from Wetlands Preservation which we received. Thank you. Chuck, did you have any questions on that? Or? No. I, I would just like to say I would concur with Will. You know, I think it usually takes a lot of work to see the LID and a lot of our science and engineering I know is away from it so it's good to see it here and we've got something, something good here so I'm making a motion to close notes of intent 270-0689 second for Franklin all those in favor so we um, will uh, write the order of conditions between now and the next meeting and send you a copy to look at and um and for the next meeting and discuss it, you send me back your comments. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is notice of intent 270. There is no DEP number yet for 11 Gregory Lane, Map 51, Lot 99, Mercurian. And this is a public hearing. Um, it's now opened, being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Here and conducted in the following manner, applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from the administrator, tech advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be given the opportunity to ask questions, which should be directed to the chair. And please give your name and address. Uh, at this time, uh, actually, there's a sign-in sheet in the uh, left-hand corner. Um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my left. Chuck Cironi, Conservation Administrator. Michael Flynn. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Harry Curtis. David Pennett. Bob Hayes. My name is Steve Erickson from North Environmental Services. This is a simple proposal. We're proposing a small retaining wall approximately three feet high at the highest point uh, to level off a small section of the lawn right along this area. You can see it on the plan, colored in gray. Erosion controls would be on the outside of that, shown in brown. The 25-foot no disturb and the 35-foot are shown as well. Uh, should be aware that this is a detention pond out here and it would be exempt as a wetland as a stormwater feature if it was created after 1997. I don't know exactly when it was created but the house was built approximately 1997. So I don't know if that was built before or afterwards. Uh, but anyhow we are impinging on the 35 foot width the retaining wall uh, but we are outside the 25 foot. We did send in a variance request for that work at within the 35 foot or structure within the 35 foot. Though I think it makes perfect sense because what we will be doing here is scraping off the top and subsoil, building the wall, putting the sand in place, and then we're pretty much done. We're out of there. Uh, so there's no chance of erosion or siltation by putting up a wall. Alternatively, we could end up sloping it uh, which of course would leave it exposed for a longer period of time and with two to one slope doesn't make any sense. So putting the wall there seems to me to make a whole lot more sense. Uh, 
we had a site visit on Tuesday. Um, Dave, myself, and, and Chuck were there. Um, I think that we haven't allowed um, soil disturbing structures within the 35 feet zone. Um, and I would uh, strongly encourage you to uh, try to redesign this outside of the 35 foot. I don't know how other members of the commission feel. I, I could redesign this to a two to one slope coming down. But doesn't it seem to make more sense to put up the retaining wall, then put the fill in place? The retaining wall is not going to allow any erosion and sedimentation, but a two to one slope gives ample opportunity for that to happen. I don't understand that. Maybe I missed a piece of this. So the. Sorry, so we did a site visit. Just give me a little bit more background. What's currently out there? It's a slope now, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all it's long. A slope. It's a lawn now. Gently Perhaps. sloping. Gently sloping lawn. Okay. With so a lot. Gently <laughs> sloping. It's, but there are also trees over to the oh, west. Is it, there are about three trees. If you look yeah. over here, yeah. about three, maybe four. This double tree right in this area. Yep. Tree in this area. And tree in this area. We're planning on taking this one down. Uh, these we won't have to take down. We'll be cutting the roots a little bit, but. Not substantially. It's a red maple. It'll grow additional roots in no time at all. This is here. This white line is the layout of where the wall would be. Mm -hmm. So you'd be building up three feet on this side. And so this is looking at from this angle. Yep. Towards the house. Oh, really? I thought, I thought that we were looking like this direction. Yeah. Right. One second. All right. Sorry, thank you. I just wanted to get an idea of. Well, what, like, I, I'm just done. So, what? It, what's the? They're just trying to get their lot level. They're just trying to get a, a flat area in the lawn. Most of the lawn slopes down. So they want to get it flat, and then you're saying a retaining wall instead of a slope after. That's correct. Raising the grade. I have a question about this. Is, is there any? fence or anything that's going on top of that wall once they're done? My understanding of the building code is it's, if it's over 36 inches, it needs a, a fence. Right. But that would be up to the building inspector. Right. Uh, you know, if I had a 36 inch wall, I would want a fence around it myself. They just thought, you know, someone came down the bottom of the deck and they took a left and started walking <laughs> across the yard and then they, you know, what was it dark? You know, they'd have a heck of a step. Yeah, it's just the kind of thing I would yeah. do. One of the things I just want to I just want to throw out there is, is I know there was some some special circumstances for the Lowell Street house with Mr. Silva Kumar. That's but he was that was an example I was thinking of too. He was inside the 35 foot line for his wall. He was outside except for the wall that he was replacing. Right. And we didn't let him go inside with that wall. We made him stay outside with anything that was new. It was outside the thirty-five. Right, foot. the thir the twenty-five. The, only, the original wall was on the twenty-five foot. The line. original wall was on the twenty-five foot line, right. and then if you remember, it takes like a, a right turn. Right. And he, they wanted to carry that along the twenty-five. Oh, foot I know. Line and, and I know. The commission took took right. exception to that, and we wanted any additional wall to stay make, outside, to make right? Turn and stay outside the thirty-five foot line. Right. But that was an example I was thinking of as well. Right. Of a similar type situation here where we didn't allow something inside the, the 35 foot line. But there was also, I think there was some special circumstances with the order conditions when that house was built because of the donation of a substantial amount of land to the town for You're talking Salem Street That's conservation area. I think that the I think that may have allowed the house to be built, to be built. in the first place right. with the limited amount of lawn that it had. Right. But doesn't it make sense? If you're going to be putting fill on the site to put a wall so you don't get erosion and siltation rather than a slope, the logic seems inescapable to me. Well, we rely on you not to, to design it so it doesn't have erosion. Yeah. That's, I mean, so that's not even a factor. Would you say what? I'm sorry, Charles? We would, we would if we didn't want a, a wall and we just said do a slope, I mean, 
I think the commission would uh, only approve one that was capable of not eroding. Not eroding. Oh, sure. So we get no erosion, no siltation. We get a permanent barrier to the 25 foot. Well, I'd, I'd like to just ask the committee, what's, uh, the commission, what's the... It's, it's a wall being built around grass there now. Is, is, except for one tree, there doesn't seem to be any disruption to any kind of animal life or plants or anything like that. What's, what's the driving concern about raising that portion of the yard three feet and just putting back what's already there? That's not a challenging question. I just want to know what the... Putting back three feet? Well, basically, feet. you're just raising the ground three feet with a retaining wall around it. But you are taking out existing trees. There's, there's one... One tree. No, you're going to affect the ones over to the left. Um, the ones that you... Yeah, yeah you took the photo off. I see those. So I went on site, but I see these trees here. There are three of them. Yeah. We outside. So the idea, the idea is we have a three-foot wall right next to these roots. <coughs> The, the roots are now underneath three feet of soil and not getting any oxygen. It just kind of... That's true. You smother that half of the tree. And to me, it's the same idea as every other time we don't allow a structure within the 10-foot zone. We, we want this little, we want this extra buffer, even if it's a grass area, even if it's sloped. Just, it, it creates that extra separation. Uh, I mean, this this would be completely beyond. You know, I, I think beyond it. This opens up a, a whole lot of situations where somebody would come to us and say, "Well, you know, I want I want this structure in there." And, and I, each I situation is unique. You, you have to look at each one and it's under its own circumstances. I, I, and I do, and I, I don't think that this. I think there's plenty of situations where this there's a comparable situation where we told a homeowner, "No, we want this outside the 35 foot zone." I don't see this as a, a project where there's good reason for exception. I mean, I don't, I don't we would make that, that erosion. We would make that erosion argument on every single one of these, Steve. Well, but I don't see the downside. You have a barrier at the 25 foot, so you have a permanent marker on the 25 foot, and you have no chance of erosion or siltation by putting up a wall. Why would you bend? But we shouldn't have. Wall just like Chuck said, we shouldn't foot. have an issue with erosion with a, a nice grass slope, either. Well. Yeah, so you're taking out the trees by cutting through the roots to put in the the, the retaining wall. I mean, you have to you have to at least uh, cut into the soil by a foot or so. So we're, we're protecting detention pond. Let's put it, this in perspective here. And the guy does own the trees. Yeah, he does own the trees. And and then there's the there's a the thought that I think that we we've been talking about, which is that we are not. Well, we haven't in the past for many people not gone over that 35 foot line with a stru uh, structure. Well, your regulation says you may enforce the 30, 35 foot. It doesn't say you shall. It doesn't require it. You have the ability to, to waive that at any time. But I, I think when we compare this project with ones that we've denied, this one holds no water. It's, it has, it, you, you have an alternative that you could use and you I, I simply think this is a better alternative. You may, but you do yeah. have an alternative. Sure, but I think this is a better alternative and we're protecting a detention mm -hmm. point. Well, it's the detention point out there, unless you can prove otherwise, is jurisdictional. Um, it may be... Uh, a good idea to look back into the, to the order of conditions. Would you say this was built? 97. 90, 90, 97. Yeah, to so look back and to see what restrictions were put on this uh, project with the original order of conditions. That's great. I um, think you'll be able to find it. And it would be nice to yeah. understand, understand, um, you know, to, to to redesign it. If you do it on the, if you do it on the 25 foot, is there uh, some sort of soft material you can use, core log, something like that, that may be more acceptable by the commission, or I don't know, some geotech fabric, geotextiles to hold that bag in place. You are going to have to do tree boxes. I mean, right now the the engineering department said stay out of the access for the easement. Yes. And uh, did you ever get the the uh, uh, from the owner why the wall in this area was was needed? 
No, I didn't. He's on vacation right now, so I haven't spoken to him. Because there's going to be a drop on the other side of that wall also. We can ask him. If you like, we can continue the hearing. Mm -hmm. I'll get you the two to one slope and show you what it looks like, and we can look at that at the next hearing. In the meantime, you get a chance to look at the records, and I'll get to see if I can find out when they actually built the detention pond. That'd be great. That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, uh, and, and, you know, Steve, I, I know you want to make the it's a detention pond. If, if you can find when it was built and if it's not jurisdictional, then well, we it's certainly not jurisdictional. Yeah, well, if you could help me on that, I'd appreciate it. He okay. flagged. Steve, you flagged on the other side of the detention pond, right? I flagged parts of the outside of the de detention pond, right. but the flagging is basically at the base of the slope for the detention pond. On the other side or the side adjacent to the grassed What's area? The WF no, I flagged, we flagged right in here. The flags that you saw were over here. Yeah. The other flags here had fallen down. Yeah. But the, the ribbon was there. They obviously were there at one point in time, but they were the base of the slope. And the retention this is So, without any other data, this is jurisdictional and based on this line. That's my interpretation of, of what's presented as, as it stands. And adjacent to the retention pond is a, looks like a stream right behind it. It's all interconnected. It is technically a stream, but it's a drainage ditch. It's taking street drainage and running it through that way. Part of that would be considered a drainage ditch because it has very little vegetation. A drainage ditch uh, stream is defined as where water flows due to a hydraulic gradient through a clearly recognizable channel except those areas up gradient of all wetlands. So at some point in time, there's enough wetland vegetation here to consider that a wetland. But a portion, probably five or 10 feet of that, could be considered just a drainage ditch because it is up gradient of all of the wetland areas. I didn't make the distinction on it. It just wasn't worth having an argument on it. We don't either. I mean, we love all wetlands, not even the ugly ones. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's like our children. It was just splitting hairs for me, so. Yeah, but I think it is for us too, honestly. So I think that's a good idea. Let's look at the previous. Do I hear a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue. Second. Those in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, please. Uh, Meadowbrook. Golf Club is not, will be continuing um, to September 11th. And we have whole new business. Uh, October 11th. October 11th. Thank you. We have all new business, uh, Board of Conditions 270-0675, Map 26, Lot 157, Lyle Estate Subdivision, 21-day uh, notice discussion. Do we have building in? Good evening. Good evening. We uh, concluded our business sometime in the spring. We've uh, gone through the summer and now it's fall again. So uh, I'd like to pick up the discussion and the uh, uh, Jameson folks would like to get going on this, uh, mobilize sometime this fall and initiate a lot of the wetland uh, mitigation work as a sort of a phase one and then the, the roadway work and uh, the house construction work would follow after that. So the order of conditions had several conditions where we needed to uh, come to the commission with a submittal at least 21 days prior to work starting. So we've uh, submitted that a couple of weeks ago and uh, anyway we want to have a discussion on those items. I think there are two that specifically require your approval. And one is the appointment of the environmental monitor, which I put myself as the, the environmental monitor. And the other is the, uh, I think you had to approve the revised wetland and buffer zone mitigation plan uh, with the additional tree and shrub species that was required in the order of conditions. And so, with the submittal package that I gave you, the first item was uh, my resume. 
and my request that I be uh, appointed as the environmental monitor. I think the order of conditions required someone with about seven years of it, uh, professional experience, and I think I've uh, I exceed that by a fair amount. So I've uh, obviously got a tremendous amount of experience in wetland delineation, construction monitoring. My resume documents that. So I've been looking for your affirmation that I would be the monitor on the project. Bill, what'd you do for the city of Salem? Uh, city of Salem, I have done wetland delineations for them and also have done a uh, review of a notice of intent they asked me to do. Is that recent or is that a lot longer? Um, that was probably several years ago. <coughs> Most recently, I mean, I'm the consultant for the town of Tewksbury on an ongoing basis. Uh, I am doing construction monitoring right now on a very large project going through Tewksbury. It's the Merrimack Valley Reliability Project, where it's the upgrade of, of uh, and creation of transmission lines that go through Tewksbury. It's crossing uh, through several wetlands, uh, obviously through a large amount of buffer zone as well, and that's gone very well. Well, I'm fine with it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, on, uh, I was just going to ask you, what did you do for Boxford? I see that as a bullet item. Yep, uh, did some wetland delineation for the town of Boxford. Do you know, remember the name of the project? I, I don't at this point. I'd have to go back in the records. Um, what I do is I just kind of keep a tally on my resume as a another town that employs my services. I add it to the list. I don't know if you know that I worked there for seven years. I remember. Yep. So. so we sh I think we should vote on this, mm -hmm. or you know, the two that we need to vote on, we should vote on tonight, uh, if if possible. Okay. Um, what I would offer. Any other comments from members of the commission? What are the two that we need to vote on? This, the approval of the environmental monitor. Yep. And <laughs> the uh, special condition 16B, uh, the wetland and buffer zone mitigation, mitigation plan. plan. And that's this. Uh, no, that no, would it's, be it's, it's the last document in your package. The one that says mitigation plan. <laughs> Thank you. The wetland buffer zone mitigation plan, including the tree mitigation. That's right. Policy plan. Okay. Right. A clever way to disguise that. Are there any comments from the community? None. Chuck, do you have any issues, comments? On the monitor? Mm-hmm. No. Is there a motion to accept Bill as the environmental monitor? I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you for that uh, vote of confidence. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do good, Bill. <laughs> I think the gauntlet's been thrown out. That was a leap of faith. I've been in business for a long time. <laughs> All right. So the other conditions that uh, we needed to submit something 21 days in advance was the requirement to notify those of butters along Plymouth Road. Uh, we had some discussions on the development team about mobilizing a little bit earlier in the summer, so we sent those letters out uh, by certified mail. And I submitted those uh, return receipt cards and the, uh, the envelopes of the people who failed to claim their uh, letter. And I submitted a copy of what we sent to them. So. Uh, that has been done. So I would ask you about that. Since it's been so long, in your, if you don't stop for another couple months, would you notify them again? Or did, how did that letter, how is it worded, so they would know that now we're going to start in the future? It was worded. Uh, that's in your package as well. Um, it says the Lila State Subdivision Project will commence shortly. So a condition of the Conservation Commission approval requires the removal of accumulated landscape debris within wetlands along the rear property line of homes abutting Plymouth Road. 
In accordance with special condition number one of the order of conditions, this letter informs you that this landscape debris removal work will commence July 19, 2017 or, or shortly after. This work will involve the use of small machinery or hand tools for removal of debris within the identified debris areas along Plymouth Road property boundary. The debris will be carted off site and any disturbed areas will be restored with appropriate vegetation coverage as needed. Now, this work is intended to be confined to the Lyle Estates property only. Sincerely, Wetlands and Land Manager. So I, was, I would like you to notify the abutters 21 days or within a reasonable amount of time prior to starting. So hope you don't have a problem notifying them again because I think it's important and I, I'm sure that no one out there really understands when it's going to happen at this point. And hearing what, you know, you're still kind of mixed up with um, planning and engineering. So the phasing of the I was going to ask you about the phasing of the site also where I don't want to have everything cleared and then you don't have a clear path to getting a uh, building started or the road started. So I didn't want to have a long term um, cleared project without building starting right away. I don't have a problem with that. We'll just we'll re notify. <laughs> um, we'll re notify them. I don't want to be held to like a 21 day period that just pushes everything out, but I'm, I'm happy to re notify them. After this meeting, I'll word it something to the effect that we've met with the Conservation Commission. When do you think uh, you, you might? It sounds like you're ready to, you know, uh, cut grub right now, which you could, I guess. But when are you going to get all your approvals for the road and all that? Um, we think that at the um, planning board, we are boiled down to having a minor modification to adjust the width of the right of way. And that would solve the, we had to request a variance from the ZBA for lot number one. And they were reluctant to give that. So if we adjust the width of the right of way, provide more space that way, we don't need the variance. And so it seems that that is the preferred solution in town hall. Uh, that would require a minor modification from the planning board. And when is their next meeting? Uh, I don't know that, but indications are from our attorney that is the the path to the solution. So it wasn't the width of the road; it was the width of the right of way with the with the road. The the. Right of way width, I believe, was 40 feet, which necessitated a front yard setback variance for lot one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, a little bit of smoke and mirrors, sleight of hand. Well, they won't give you the the required variance. The zoning board wouldn't give the required variance, so the planning board was amenable to shrinking the width of the right of way to create a larger front yard. Mm. Was that the only thing that? that was what did a miss with that lot one or is there anything else with the zba i'm not aware of anything else no, that's what i understood also there was that that, that, was, it, one, it was just that, that one problem set. i think you were brought in on that you went yeah i thought there was something no. else with yeah. the size of 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 that well that has to do with the width and that one section right. um and then engineering is, uh, do you know anything about engineering? Are they okay also? As far as I know, they're okay. No. So you could conceivably start in the next month? We'd like to. All right, so therefore that, that letter would be fine. Yeah. So, so I think it's a good idea to send something out. Uh, the, you know, if I'm a, an abutter and I receive a letter, you know, the, the first thing, you know, we're all familiar with the project. You know, a lot of them came in and, this year. I don't know if they've been coming into the ZBA as well, but uh, I know I, I look at something and I say, well, I don't quite understand what this means or what they're doing. Sometimes it's good to have a contact, whether it's in the chapter of the conservation. No, I, I, I suggest the environmental monitor should do it. It's on my letter. <laughs> so that's, I, I think that's a good idea. Uh, one of the things I would say, though, so you're, you've got a letterhead with a number. Should you just include it's directly coming from Bill Manuel. That way they know, I'm going to call this number, I'm going to reach out to Bill. Um, that's who I need to talk to. That's why. Did anybody reply to I mean, letter? Bill, by all means, you can put my number on it, too, if you did want. But no, if, if not, it's fine. And two of them, they didn't get through. 
kind of par for the course. I guess. What's that? What was that? I was just asking if anybody had replied to the, to the letter. They said no. Initial letter. I think the letter was. If someone replied, it called me up. Come, and I remember said, you, yeah. I think you, I remember you telling us that saying somebody had called you saying a letter. Well, probably said out. it was for planning. And I was confused about what it was all about myself. I don't think the letter was very, uh, at least what I heard, I didn't see a letter um, until now. But I, I was uh, confused at what was starting. Oh, I remember that. Bill, this was a lot of moving parts. <laughs> These submittals. The wetland and buffer zone mitigation plan, including tree mitigation policy planting, that was also covered in, in these things as well, correct? And it's kind of a, it, it's kind of catches all of it, right? Yeah, that was uh, discussed at length and modified through the hearing process. And the only reason that we had to amend that after the order of conditions was issued because there's con Condition uh, 16B, I believe it was, that wanted three tree species in the planting specification. So we added three tree species. And then what I also did, as long as I had the uh, develop the, the knotweed removal sequence, I tossed that in there as well. Mm -hmm. Question, I guess, for you, Chuck, on on um, on the timing or the the uh, reports that we would be looking for. Is it the replication or, or wetlands planting that we look for two years of reporting, and then the removal of invasives three years? No, it's, it's in the order of condition for the invasive is usually three. Um, and reporting for the replication area. It probably says two. Uh, I'm not aware of a time specification in the order of conditions, mm -hmm. uh, unless unless you find it. Uh, but in my report, I have a monitoring schedule for two years for the, the wetland replication. Well, it's it's the, actually the, you know, the, the, the fill removal, not weed removal, converting the upland to wetland. So that has a two-year monitoring period. Now the order has many uh, sort of milestone reporting requirements, such as when the, uh, the fill at the outlet of the pipe, the stream fill, when that's removed, I'm obligated to report in, as well as, you know, coordinate right at the get-go. I work with Chuck. Remember, he's got the final say about how much removal is going to be required. Yep. So we have a report after that. We have a report after the debris removal. We have a report after the trash pickup. We have a report after the um, the, the knotweed excavation so there are, there's going to be an awful lot of reporting and remember there's several conditions in here that says the conservation commission agent is the person that decides when the debris removal is complete when the obstructions are removal is complete when the sediment removal is complete so we expect a lot of communication and interaction yeah so those are put in because I wasn't relying on myself to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's a stopping point where Bill has to tell me in a few days in advance they expect to be done. We set up a schedule to come down and check out the site. And I think it's going to be important. Communication is going to be key here. And I'm sure that you... He's going to be sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> Won't bother us. <laughs> I, hope, I hope so. I hope that it works out that there's a lot of time to, you know, it's right down the street to just be on top of that site. It would be you know, just kind of great to see it progress. And then, uh, just from a standpoint, you, you gave us some uh, contacts for supervisors and their, their construction is going to occur in two different phases. And I, I think you, you include this in here, but there will be a pre-construction as one contractor moves out and then the next one moves in 
there will be a, a pre-construction with each of those. If somebody new is coming in, they're, they're going to have the chance to do a pre-construction with Chuck or with the town in general. To yeah, the sequence specifies that. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to happen is uh, we have more of a specialty contractor to do, to do the, the wetland mitigation stuff. And what's going to happen is they're going to go and essentially get all of the mitigation work done if everything goes right, they'll get all of that done, including build that uh, the main detention basin, and then that would be the construct or the the finish of phase one, and then Jameson Development comes in, constructs the utilities and the roadway and the house construction. So the sort of the fine uh, wetland work that's EKB whatever EKB construction. So that's how that's going to work. And that's going to be the, the front end of this project. And so that's November, December, January, um, November? We're thinking uh, really more like November. Oh, I have a couple questions. The, there's a, I forget what it's called, but there's a essentially a, um, a stormwater basin adjacent to the, the long retention I don't want to misword it but I can't remember what we call everything the long retention pond there the big one the big one yep so there's an overflow pipe to that and then it can if it tops over it'll just drain down the hill right yeah but that's size to accommodate a hundred year event yeah yeah so when you're sequencing the construction is that long retention pond going to be built and then the road's going to be built? Or are they going to? Yes. So, how so, you... so that is in place and ready to receive water as soon as the binder course goes down. And it's, it just seems like it's all really close together. How do you make sure you don't? Uh, it is very close together, yep. Is, is what about vegetation? Is that going to be established by that point? Mm, probably not because one's going to sequence right into the next. It seems like that's going to be tough if it's being used, but there's probably no place else to have the water go. Anyways. Yeah, I, I see. So you have to do that before you do the road because you don't have anywhere for the water to go. Well, they hold it back until they're you say in the binder course, so the finished yeah. course would go on pretty much at the end. Right. Um, and the water has to go somewhere, so it'll have less sediment with that, but that first flush is going to be horrible. So. I don't know. It that, generally always is. Yeah. You know, that's why many times they use the the uh, detention basins as a sediment trap. Yeah. As the uh, environmental monitor, would you, after that binder course goes in, before the first rainstorm, uh, would you be recommending street sweeping if needed, if sediment was built up on that binder course? Yeah, if it was outrageous, yeah. But we do have deep sump catch basins, and there is a sediment vault before that uh, BMP. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know we're ready to, with the finish coat, everything gets cleaned out and uh, like brand new. So there's no direct discharge into this. Right. No, I get that. I get. I just want to get a sense for how you're gonna do that because I'd be worried if I was doing it that I. When I was going to put the road in, I trampled the retention basin. Well, again, you know, the the thing about it is that Bill's out there and yeah, he no, kind of represents all those things that could go wrong and what yeah. he he might ask for fencing if he sees people not paying attention to that or if it if it looks too close for him. Yeah. But it, it certainly would have to be repaired. Yeah. Uh, even the compacted soil would have to be repaired. I mean, you don't want anyone to go in it after you get that soil working right. So no. it's it, it's you know. Down a, a, a slope, no yeah. one would go in there on purpose. Mm. So, how much of a slope is it from the height of the road to the to the high point of that long retention basin? Is that it right here? I didn't think it. I thought. See, I thought it was pretty. I didn't think it dropped down that much from the road to the top of the retention basin.
196, and so the road is about 196, and the bottom of the basin is 191 and a half. So five feet to the bottom of the basin. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, so the other question I had is, how 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 do you how far down do you have to go to get knotweed out? Because I had some in my garden once, and literally for years, I mean, it was like coming up from buried this much. So how do yep. you? Well, we're going to take it out with an excavator, so we're not worried about depth. We're you, going to try to get the root mass, all of it. How far down do you have to go? Do you know? Could be two feet. If it's a huge established stand, it could be a massive ball of root. So we're going to excavate that, put it in a, a dumpster, and take it off to a facility. Okay. This, this stuff is just impossible. Pittsburgh had a problem with that. I don't know if you saw the article last year. They're trying to figure out how to eat. They're serving at restaurants now, trying to see if you can eat it. <laughs> trying to get rid of that. Really? So you can make a buck out of it. Um, so I saw you reached out to the MBTA. The group. Uh, we did send that letter to the MBTA. Uh, as of now, we haven't had a, a response. Didn't think we would, but uh, we'll certainly follow up on that. Maybe. Right. On page 11, um, in, in the plants, you've got six red maple and six white pine. But then you say total of 12 shrubs. Aren't they saplings at that point? We have this um, at that size, they're four, five to six feet tall. Yeah. So that's a shrub in my book. Mm -hmm. I, I it'll grow it up to a tree, but at that size, it's a shrub. Okay. Find a bus stop in front of your house, you'll have gotten your answer from the MBTA. <laughs> we'll put that there. <laughs> Dave, you had you had something. We discussed this. Yeah, and it was part of the sequence, and it was had had to do with uh, um, part of this. It says detail. Yeah, no other. There was two things I had a question on. It was one was it says no other processes can go forth before that's that's done. And I know it was referring to like one section. But it kind of, the way it read in the document, and I had. Uh, That's some, I thought you had I did, a I question penciled it out. Pencil. I did. One was about the grubbing and the knotweed. Um, clear but not grub. The vegetation within the knotweed removal which, area. Which piece of this is on the construction sequence and methodology for knotweed knotweed removal. The two page. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, list of special. Yeah, this two page thing here yeah, it was. Uh, uh, it says all clear and tear removed from the uh, stall erosion control. So I assume from this. Where it says clear, what you, you are. Dave? Sorry, it's on this. It's this two page. Construction, construction sequence and methodology for knotweed right. removal and, and right. creation. Wait, no, which number on that? That's it's uh, seven. Starts yeah. at seven, and then it uh, goes down to ten, and it's. Uh, uh, you know, then you install an erosion control barrier. Because one of the things you just said before is that you were going to take out the the knotweed with an excavator. So it says here you clear but not grub. And then it says here you, so it appears to me that from this, that you're saying you're like gonna go in and lop it off. And then you're gonna install the erosion control barrier. Yes, and then you're gonna grub it out. But So you're not gonna initially take it right out with an excavator. You're gonna cut it off? Is that what you're gonna do? 
yes, that's my preference because it's virtually impossible to install your erosion controls properly if you have to fight through all the thick brush. Right. So my preference is to go in there, cut the brush in the trees at ground level, haul that debris out, chip it, whatever. You know, the knotweed gets all containerized. Any woody shrubs, they'll get uh, removed from the site as well. Then once you, the site's open and you can work, that's when you stake in your erosion control. There'll be an inspection after that, approval, and then you can start the actual earth disturbance. Right, but if you have knotweed that's under the erosion control, it, well, how are you going to? That was when I read that and I went back and forth. We're going and back after and forth, all I, of the knotweed. Yeah. So if, if the, the knotweed has expanded beyond the line on the erosion control line on the plan, we're going around the knotweed. We're going to get it all. Okay. So, we're going to go around the knot. So, it's, you may be moving and then re replacing the erosion control as you're grubbing out the knotweed. No. Uh, unless, unless there's a situation where we're digging and we find a clump that's very, very close to where the erosion control barrier is, and that has to be moved temporarily, that would be the only situation. We would hope to place that initially so we don't have to move it. Okay. That, that's what I... It was like, okay, well, if, you, if you're trying to get rid of all of it, you cut it off and then you put the erosion control barrier down, but if there's not weed under the erosion control barrier, that doesn't get taken care of. It'll be taken care of. That's... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? When I was reading that, I was... Yeah, well, that's that's my job in the field to say okay. we're going after that material right there. Don't put your erosion Push control barrier control. on it. Give me okay. some workspace. All right. Because there's a uh, that the the erosion control barrier is delineated on the plan as to where that's going. Right. So I'm not really certain how you can. But as I said, it's been a couple of years now. Yep. So if the knotweed has expanded beyond that, okay, we're going to go get it. What you'll end up with is, is a larger replication area then. Mm -hmm. In this, there was a, <coughs> the ongoing monitoring for the growth of the, the, uh, the bushes and trees that you're planting. Mm -hmm. The next page on page five, um, the siltation barrier between the mitigation area and adjacent wetlands shall remain in place only until no growth is sufficient to stabilize the surface. How does that, there's a very significant timeline for the growth and the, the uh, success, success of the other plants that, that have been planted. There's no real timeline on this. Uh, and I, I, at first blush, it makes sense to me, but then there's another part of it that doesn't when it says that uh, it will remain in place only until new growth is sufficient to stabilize the surface. Um, is that is that tied with the, the bushes and the tree, or trees, or is that just on the, the wetland mix that's being planted? Um, it's, it's tied to the stabilization of the ground because our right. ultimate goal is we don't want to have a barrier between the natural wetland and the created wetland. Right. We only want that erosion barrier there for as long as it's necessary to ensure that we don't get erosion into the natural wetland. So it's, so it's a field call. It's probably a season at least. Okay. All right. So the, the, that stabilization for the trees and the bushes is more it's just t tied to gr ground runoff not the the bushes and the trees that are planted if I understand you that right. yes okay that's the way it read but when I read it it didn't make sense to me when I read it so that was my question any other comments from members of the commission? I just have one last question. The leaves that are up against the the, the neighbors have, have or the, the, it's adjacent to the neighbor's property. Yeah. 
Is that coming out first? Because it sort of reads like that's coming out later. That's probably coming out first because that's the farthest in. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I, I know we've talked about this, and it's just worth reiterating. You know, I think that the big thing here is going to be communication, um, you know, making sure. You know, I know this, you've come to us and with the 21 days prior, but you know, as best we can, we don't want to. I don't. I don't want Chuck getting a call saying, "Oh, remember we talked about that 20 days ago? We're going to be out there tomorrow." Nope. Type thing. Oh, the the very first thing is we'll have to have a pre-construction meeting. So at that time, you know, we'll have a time. You know we're serious at that point, and uh, you know we'll be able to talk. Yeah, next week we'll be starting this phase. We're going to move into you know the, this phase after that. So, okay. that's good. Okay. Any other comments from community? Hearing none. Do we have another thing? Yeah. So it, have, it, it would be food. this. Um, wetland, wetland and buffer zone wetland and buffer yep. mitigation. I make a motion to accept the wetland and buffer zone mitigation plan. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Good luck with the <coughs> planning and CPA. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Who's second? I do. Okay. Uh, the next old new business is an order of conditions 270-06870 Border Road, Map 6, Lot 4, Hanson. Uh, did you talk to Jeff about that burn? It's Jeffrey. Is that lot actually in Reading? Yes. Yeah, you got that weird border right there. I was looking at that. That's a strange like that. cutout. Yeah. What are we talking about? Beaver Dam? No. no. Zero border road. Zero. Oh. You're asking if the zero border road lot's in Reading? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Too late to Well, I, I know, but, but <laughs> you, you look at the boundary line that we were moving in Reading right, right there. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, and that's why, not to be funny, but it looks so close to where that, that line is. I just said, well, I wonder if that's between 2 and 26. So, anyway, the gray house, the new gray house that's across the street, that's a woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Border Road. So I did have a couple conversations with uh, Jeffrey Brown, and uh, the, as I was preparing the order of conditions, which I sent out to the commission, um, I did notice some inconsistencies. One was the elevations in this detail here, which have been fixed. Uh, there, it's elevation uh, 102 is uh, consistent here, here. And then on the plan, 102 is uh, where they're going to bring that town to. Right there. First note. Yeah. So I'll just let you guys go to that. And then uh, another inconsistency was one of the flags was marked A instead of B, which has been cleaned up. And the third thing, which I don't believe the commission had an opportunity to uh, discuss was I asked him about the berm that he wanted to run from uh, along the wetland B series from from uh, flag one down to flag 14 so I asked him to come to the meeting tonight and explain why that was necessary to uh, work on the bank of the stream to make uh, to turn it into a berm or at least to add six inches to it and um, what we ended up deciding was it wasn't important and they took it off uh, the plan and that's no longer part of this project so those are the so those are the changes the only other thing that came up was we did not approve the flags on <coughs> this side over here, uh, which is 15 through 24 on the B series. We didn't approve those flags because um, it was uh, a little more inconsistent. We had, at the site visit, we had that conversation way back uh, months ago, 
and it was inconsistent with how it flattened out in this area here and they were okay with that also so that's what it says in the order of conditions so this is a new plan he's going to send me hard copies if it's approved tonight so you have the order of conditions uh, I don't know if uh, I took everyone's changes and included Jeffrey's which were you know I, I guess I spelt his name wrong but outside of that he was okay with the rest Did you have a chance to? No. Yep. You're going to have a chance to review it? I give you, I give you my feedback, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what were the two things? I sent you two things. One was calling it a variance to the uh, setback or as, waiver. Opposed, as opposed to a waiver. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that the variance was a better definition of what we were letting them do. I can't remember what the other thing was. It was small. The insignificant changes, but I did make them the variance I didn't make, but I will. Okay. So. We actually discussed that at the last meeting. The variance? We yeah. approved it. He's. Right. Um, we wanted to say variance in yeah. the order of conditions yeah. so that we know that it was a var right. variance in accordance with our bylaws and not necessarily. It's not just saying we're waiving it. It's okay yeah. for you to not comply, which is sort of what that sounded more sure. like to me. No other. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Make a motion to approve the order of conditions. Second. All those in favor? Um, we have three uh, orders of conditions, three carriage lanes, 62 Gray Coach Road, and 56 Gray Coach Road. Um, I reviewed uh, three carriage lane, um, and uh, we, I guess, had looked at or asked Tom Hughes to give us uh, the cost of the value of the vegetation that would be replanted, and that was uh, um, the basis of the bonds for the three different properties. Um, did everybody else have an opportunity to look at the other? I did. Mm -hmm. okay. I wasn't here last week. Okay. I didn't see that much of that. Ten thousand dollar bond, about three yeah. grand, give or take, per house, roughly. That's what I saw. Yeah, so the bonds were based on the plant stock, um, which seemed reasonable to, to do, just in case uh, there was some die-off, and it all wouldn't die off, so what we would end up doing is some would be spent on labor and some would be spent on plant stock, but yeah, it, it, to me it seemed reasonable. Bob, did you say 10000 Yeah, all together. That was for Port Road. Yeah, it wasn't... Yeah, th these were um, lower, right? Considerably lower. There's yeah, two thousand. The, the numbers that the numbers that time sent us. Yeah, in aggregate, he said. Yeah, like together. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. okay. It was a total. Yeah. yeah. A large number of the plants are the um, New England wetland plant restoration quality, so they're typically about twelve dollars each. I actually accounted for them at fifteen each, to just to because there'll be delivery or mm -hmm. expenses in picking them up. And the other ones I took off an Excel spreadsheet from a supplier Biddeford, that's up at Biddeford, Maine, Pearson Nurseries, and I added a little bit just to account for delivery to those and uh, came up with that number. I think, Chuck, you looks like you rounded up to the nearest 100. Is that the way you did yeah. that? Yeah. So, just so then there's just a little bit extra. So hmm. I think we talked about it last time. That we're not going to get 100% die-off. I've never seen 100% die-off. Sometimes you get 100% of one species dying off. That's if you just do a bad job choosing a plant or something changes. So um, I think it's plenty of money. And especially when you look at these are homeowners who are actually committed to doing it right. I, the risk of anything going wrong, this order is filed at the registry of deeds. That, you know, it's a lien on the property. They're, they're not going anywhere. It's not like it's a developer who may come into town and leave. Yeah, I didn't Were there any other comments from 
yeah, from you guys or? No, I mean, I, re I read through a draft. Um, I went over there were a couple like typos and just word wordsmithing things, but nothing that really changed any any overall meaning. You know, we I think we tailored a couple things just for the nature of the project and and the details, and we added the one bound that you asked for at the end of the stone wall mm -hmm. on the plan. Okay. Do I hear a motion? You have to do all three. Yes, yes. separately. Separately, yes. So I should, I should mention, by the way, Joyce Thompson's here tonight. Hey, Joyce. So, uh, Joyce. so we've now had all three of them have been able to attend at least one meeting. So. I'll make a motion to approve the order of conditions for 270-069-156, Great Coach. Second. All those in favor? I make a motion to do 270-0690-62, Great Coach. Second. All those in favor? And I'll make a motion for 0692 Three Carriage Lane. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. No. Well, Thanks, Jeff. Good luck with starting, right? You can just talk about starting right away. Yeah, yeah, we're, um, we think that the landscaper, at least one of them, can start Thursday, so I'm still going to coordinate with Chuck, and the initial work is going to be that removal of mulch and really kind of prepping it for the yeah. plants. And um, for scheduling plants, I've done some sourcing, and um, I've got to talk to each address. Mm -hmm. But I think um, we may end up, like the blueberries that are available right now are 18 to 24. Mm -hmm. So I may just, I'll talk to Chuck about another plant to maybe add in with those, just to, as an added assurance. But I didn't want to put it on the plan. I want to just increase the chances of compliance down the road. But each homeowners in a different spot. It's likely that 56 and 62 will want to wait until the spring to plant the larger stock mm -hmm. because of the warranty that comes with it as a year. And if we put it in now, you know, so yeah. to, to maximize that and the chances of surviving, we'll probably do that. But yeah. I'll just coordinate with Chuck on all that stuff. But okay. so, so I think what I was trying to get at, that was great, but I, what I was trying to get at is they're at their own risk, they're going to start before the appeal right. breaks. Before the appeal breaks. might have realized that, but that's what's yeah. happening. Yeah, okay. we had talked about it at the last meeting. The problem is both landscapes are so busy. Yeah. Early as they could start was this week. So okay. it sort of worked out. Anyhow, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Take care. Chuck, do we have well, Mrs. Thomas, those? you're welcome to come back for our next meeting. You had so much fun tonight, right? <laughs> No. It was well. I watched the last one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's almost as good as so Don Abbey. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You have a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> don't uh, don't move on. Let me get this straight because I don't want to move on. Don't move on to. Um, it's open for them. Okay. It's under that Norton Buddha book. Okay. Is this what we're doing? Which one do you want to do? Um, this isn't on the agenda. The plot plan has this all 56 the resource code. lines on it. Here? No. Is it that one? Two more. And then the design. This is the one that uh, Jack fells in it. Sure. And then. Uh, and the design is, there's a pool design sheet. That one, yeah. That one is the design sheet. Okay, let me just have to take two more. Mm -hmm. There's two more coming from you, Michael. Oh. I'm just going to move the truck. Chuck's multitasking. Mm -hmm. 
Would have been presenting to uh, about this being related to No. And it just pro forma notification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just. Yeah, yes. Uh, we'll and then there's one other thing that, that Chuck okay. is tree removal. Okay. <laughs> that's to do with the deal. That's this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you stop on that? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I don't know, last year, Jack Sullivan came to the Conservation Commission about 26 mile post road, and we approved uh, some additions. And um, this plan right here, let's see if I can get oh, this piece of going it, increase this a little bit. Which one's 26? Sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Do you recognize that? Or, um, yes. Is this the, the thing that was out like behind Al yeah. Cool Yacht's house? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> it does look like that same property though. Yeah. It looks yeah, like that. That's the same shape. Uh, and what was the, the shed and the, yeah. where the uh, circuit? Yeah, I'm not blending together. Oh, do you have oh I was going to bring two. That's all right. Save me a trip. Is my post right off of West? What about that main drag that runs into? So anyways, we approved this and the jurisdictional lines are um, right here, 25 foot line, here 25 foot, mm -hmm. and the 35 foot is right here. I think you lose that a little bit, but it goes straight through here. So the structure, in other words, is what I'm bringing to your attention, is right on the 35 foot, okay? Now, they've been working with Jack, and none of this is built now. So they have, some, they, of, it's built. some of it's built, but the deck's that's there. not built? The deck's there, there's a photograph I got. Oh, okay, uh, so the, the next plan doesn't show some of this stuff. They're gonna move this dry well over to here. That's on the plan, and they're gonna try, this is why we're here tonight, and this is why gentlemen's here tonight they're going to try to put a pool in in this area and that's that's what we have to see and give some advice on this is the one behind Al's Al's old place yeah. oh, 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 oh. Street. it's street it. you can see the back of Al's house from this, right. this house okay. the street is it? mile post uh, used to be a jungle gym right in the middle of the yard yep and then you can see where the plate it says play structure that's right mm -hmm. Oh, yes, now I remember the place to go. All right. Um, I can go to the next one, I guess. Yeah, I'm yeah. so going to bring my, our, our design on. It's a build on top. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is fun. No? Hey, Mike. Uh, Sc scroll down. Try it, man. Try it. Where's, uh, uh, where you where want to get you? out of it? Go to the upper right X. Or? It's just the next page, right? Yeah, I thought it was, not it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want me to talk to this? Yeah, why not? All right. So, we looked at all the setbacks. The town has a 10-foot setback to all structures for accessory structures like swimming pools, and we have to be five feet off of side and back lots, lot lines. So, if you put all those setbacks together with the 35-foot setback to the wetland, the 10-foot to the house, and the five-foot to the you will end up with this little area right here. That's your sort of without any push or shove. Sorry, could you orient? I, I'm I'm disoriented now from where this way. way. Okay. Wetlands right here. Okay. Um, this this land is sloping to the wetland, and uh, the building edge. This is hard building right through here. Yep. And this is a deck. Which stairs coming off that yeah, deck? Yeah, I didn't need to come along to the patio there. Okay. Can we go back to the other one for a second? Yeah, yeah, if you could. There you go, right here. Yeah, and now you're seeing the whole lot. Yep. So, you know, so, so everything here is all. You're right here. This well is over there. It's over there now. It's over there now. Yeah, nothing's, nothing's named. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the 35 foot and the 25 foot? 35, 25. These two ones. So, 
we would like to use this space here up to the 25 and possibly even maybe five foot more to get in a 20 by 20 foot pool. That's, that's what we're, our first desire. Now there is, I was reading through the, the zoning for the 10 foot setback. You could get relief from the 10 foot setback if you push it, if you push the structure inside the 10 foot setback then the pool becomes part of the house, becomes part of the principal structure. And then that would be imposed on the principal structure setback, which is 15 feet. So if, if this was to move this way, it would just, like a magnet, attach itself to the house, and then I have to have the 15 feet, which is right here. So now, with, now I got pool space, maybe somewhere in here, if I did that. Uh, also, the pool is under 600 square feet, which allows me to use the side buffer. I can push this pool right to the property line if I wanted to. I'd rather not. I'd rather have some vegetation edge to give some privacy buffer to the neighbor. So we kept pushing. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. And we kind of landed here. And, uh, and then to lessen the impact to the slope and the wetland, we're proposing a, uh, a detention area which would become a rain garden, a vegetated bio filter. And then this whole slope would get also vegetated. So everything from here over is now lawn would become ground covered shrubs and plantings within the wetland. So this would be like a mitigation bio filter. And that would capture all the runoff on this whole the majority of the of the site. Right now this is just a, a sloping lawn right to the wetland without any other than lawn area. So is the idea, I'm sorry to catch your name. Don Scott. Don, um, thank you. The, the so we, we're talking here about, so you, we got to, we don't, we don't really allow structures in the, within 35 feet, right? So is what, what you're proposing sort of two to one replication of what is today protected or you can't really replicate within. But you're talking about what, replicate this space. Well, so try, I'm trying to see if if I don't see a way to do it. To, to get across the 35 foot line line with the structure, there would need to be some sort of variance. Right. It doesn't necessarily. Well, I, I guess so you're not in the wetland. You're not no, you're not in the wetland, right. but you're in the 25 foot net zone. And even though the grass is not necessarily natural, it does provide some filtration and some absorption of, you know, nutrients and pollutants from entering the wetland. And we've all, um, you know, we we've talked about setting precedent and, and that we're not really wanting to do that within the 35 feet. So I, I if we ask you to get to out towards the 35 foot line, is there any room, is there any way that you have? Push the pool outside the 35? Yep. I have this. So, I mean, the kitty pool is all I can put in. Um, that's not a swimming pool. That's, you know. So, that's why I said, well, I could come to you and just see where. There's you know, ideas, it, thoughts. Yes, I didn't want to spend money and establishing a, a notice of intent and right. mm -hmm. really want to get the temperature of the board on what might be possible. Uh, what And I'm showing some mitigation efforts to uh, improve the, vegeta the vegetation between the pool and the wetland as well as uh, a rain garden that will capture any surface runoff and give it an opportunity to infiltrate before running off into the wetland. And what did we use for criteria for allowing the pool on Whittier Road? Whittier. It's an above ground pool. Huh? It's an above ground pool. So it's on our minor project permit as a uh, temporary structure. So temporary impact um, because it's not in the ground. It's not, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not in the ground. It's not permanent. Okay. It's, it's like considered. 
permanent. Like so we have it. It's, it's considered temporary. Yeah, it's because it's like a shed or you know those things that are temporary. Um, so the the in ground pool, the above ground pool is considered temporary, but the patio stones around it wouldn't be. Uh, On the Whittier Road? Well, anywhere. Anywhere, just in general? Because I know that in the, in the uh, that was one of the conditions that we imposed as a as a commission on the Zero Haver lot, was to have them cut off their uh, porous brick paver patio because it was considered a structure and it was inside the 35 foot line. I think that was more because it was impervious, right? Right, but that's consistent. I don't know. So why, so... What, what, what's, what's the only considered? difference is an above ground pool or an in ground pool. The, right. There's not usually paver patio around the bottom part of an above ground pool. So right. you don't have to you don't have to go down. I there. guess I'm looking at this. This is showing that there's a that there are some kind of pavers or whatever around there. So mm -hmm. yeah, and there's pavers around that because he's saying he can't he can't get any closer. He can't, he can't go closer, closer than that ten right. foot area. Right. Um, or he's got to go 15 feet here. Right. Which doesn't make sense. Um, and, and the side to side isn't the problem for us. It's the 35 foot line. Yeah, they've essentially built out the lot as, almost as far as they can go with the house. Yeah. And, uh, and we're just trying to see if there's any possibility of adding a pool to this yard. Yeah. So they're moving it to. We can't go to the, the side yard. Line we can't go to the front yard. Um, so it's a hardship on the client to... Is the pool a hardship? Okay. Well, for them, they'd like to have their kids at home, and so this is a, a way of creating a, an attraction and, a, and, a, and a, a luxury to have. So would this be uh, acceptable as a variance if they made it a, an above-ground pool? It would be a minor project, is what you, Chuck. That's what you're saying. Well, I'm not sure how far away he's going to end up being. I mean, this is a lot, and uh, I'm confused. Whittier was an inside 35 foot. It was like 19 feet away. Really? Yeah. So that can't be right. There was wetlands there. Right. And what system is that? That's um, Old Farm Road. Ooh, That's just remember. a kind of an isolated drainage. There was the area. above ground pool that Chuck, Chuck laid out, and we were trying to figure out configurations. And it, I thought it ended up of like, well, is it 35 or is it 32? And it was the RDA at that point, anyways. And we said it was. You know, between if it was 35 versus 32, we felt that it was in, in a spot that was close enough. That's the only time I remember. Who was that? Yeah, this was. Uh, this recently? Yeah, this was about a year ago. I thought that this was just this we past summer. They, it was really just like. It a, was, yeah, you might have been on the commission. There's one on the entrance road to the gun club that was really hard to lay out, but it was an above ground pool. Yeah, this. I thought that was an above ground. This was an above ground pool. There was all the There was like a, a pat. There was like a. I don't know, a rock area or a patio area. Or not, um, I think it was, it was just like stone logs or stone there or something. That, and we, we couldn't figure out how to get this get it laid out so it could work. And we said, Chuck, go out there and see if you can make something that could, oh, I know who you're that could fit. <laughs> and, and we just said, you know, is that 32, is it 35? And we said, you know He what? stayed out of the 35. That, okay. that guy hasn't done his pool yet. That was a, That's also an above ground pool. Yeah, so that was an and above he, ground. He we stayed out of that the was 35. the only time I remember. Oh, I know. That was on Baker Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baker Road. The guy yeah. had the, the railroad ties and he had yes. a swing set there. Yeah, yeah yes. no, that's not the one I'm talking about. Okay. What I'm talking about is one that was adjacent to uh, Birch Meadow Drive. The, the yard was at that, that Lollipop Street that comes out right basically it's to the end. It sounds familiar, but I, I just it's, uh, Tennyson, off the forest. Can you pull What we just did was kind of a dead end, and you would look at the, at the high school. Right. Yeah. That's the one we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. 
I was just wondering if we could apply the same principles, but I didn't realize there was a difference between the in ground and above ground pool. I'm curious to how an above ground pool that might be there for 20 years differs from a retaining wall. <coughs> why, why does I, I don't understand the distinction between those two? I'm, I'm a little confused by that aspect, too. <laughs> but yeah. I guess the above ground pool is a conversation for another day, right. but, but I don't, I I mean, don't, I don't I, necessarily disagree. That's where I'm getting all confused about, you know. But the difference between them, because they I don't think either one of them are harmful. But I and I get the fact that they're both there, and they're they're truly. I mean, maybe the one's a minor project and one isn't, but they both seem kind of benign. Well, it's, it's, and because the retaining wall goes below grade. But it, okay. I mean, there's a definition of what is a structure. Yeah. We always talk about I it. I think of, I think of pool. Well, but they're also the above ground pool is going to go below grade as well. Because the grade of the uh, the yard falls off, so that would have to be excavated and leveled off in order to put the pool there. Yeah, so I mean, that is below no. grade as I'm well. I'm not defending you. I'm just trying to explain. <laughs> it. I'm just making sure that we're applying the same principles to. I'm to just everyone. trying to figure out what could possibly how one could be more harmful than the other. Or right, well, not. well, so that has. I, I guess I, I I don't disagree with those those. I guess. Neither of those items have anything to do with the, the current the wall with the current discussion. Definitely I more. I, I, especially permanent with those than a pool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't a retaining wall more permanent than a wall a pool? Because it's retaining But it's not a something permanent that can't be easily removed. Those above ground pools are not I mean, unless it's full name, but I mean those are not as temporary as what I would think of temporary yeah, I mean, right. structure is. I have, I have a neighbor that's got an above ground pool that has a deck around it that you could not take down. <laughs> <laughs> the building inspector made him put in four foot sauna tubes. Right. I, I right. think it was an accommodation. I, I, I didn't write that. It, it's your regulations, but I, it must have been an accommodation. It must have been just too hard to defend saying you need a notice of intent for an above ground pool. Hmm. And so they made it a minor project permit. If you're 50 feet away, and if you're closer than 50 feet, it's a it's a request for determination of a, applicability. Okay. Well, so, so that's that's a very. That's well, I'm not against either one of them. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I, I'm not fighting because I don't think either one of them should be in place. I, I I'm trying to in my brain. But anyway, I don't. I'm, we're here's the Whittier <laughs> place and encroaching on this gentleman's That time. line's pretty much where we put it. That says 33 feet to the end of the line, and they had it some the pool somewhere in that area. So that's was, Whittier. Yeah, yeah the Whittier. Yeah, I think that was. And he was off the house by a little bit, by 10 feet or so. Right. And he was away yeah. from the deck, and yeah. we were, we were kind of in that 28, 30 feet. So I mean, that was an above ground pool. But I think that was to the up, up, up one side of that pool, not the downstream side of the pool. The downstream side of that pool was like 19 <laughs> feet away. Thank you. Guys, it works. Look at those lines; they never move. <laughs> Just up the pool. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how. How so? The pool was only what 12 feet wide. I don't know what. What was it? Yeah, yeah but. That I mean, we're talking about something within the And that bottom right hand house is the Whittier house. Whittier Road house that we had the Yeah. Yeah. The retaining wall and the pool in the bottom right hand corner yep. if you're looking at it. Yeah. And that's that's fifty no, it's not, and they don't take pictures that quick. But uh, it's fifty feet there, you know, minus twenty, so you're still thirty. Minus thirty, you know, like twenty. It wasn't I don't know, like we're twenty five feet away, twenty eight. We're letting anything inside the twenty five. Inside the 25 And it's an above ground pool. And it was above ground pool. Um, yeah. I, must have, I mean, that's, must that's, have this one back. that's just something that the commission's always been comfortable with. It, yep. This is this is kind of a new, the last two are kind of new. I mean, do, how does the commission feel about a retaining wall in the 20 feet? I mean, how does it feel about a above ground pool, which is probably going to have to have some sort of retaining wall at the back side of it to, um, or some grading. Is, it, is there any grading proposed with that? I mean, yeah, the pool yeah, there's, there's, there's all kinds of grading. Yeah, so there's all kinds of grading. Yeah, well, yeah. this is an in-ground pool, that. correct? Right now, there's a three to one slope there now. Uh, right. We would have, if we put the pool in the way I have it designed, it would go to a two to one slope and then get vegetated rather than lawn. But do I, do I understand correctly, this is an in-ground? 
Yes. What we're proposing is an interim. Yeah, okay, all right. I, I, so, Chuck, you're trying to see if even a above ground pool could be acceptable. No, I think we're just kind of working through. I'm not sure that that would work for this situation or if it's even desired. No. I didn't realize how close you were until. Uh, you know, until now, that's the 25 foot line right there. That's the 30 foot. That's, 30 30 that's, that's, that's the 25. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're really good. basically mostly occupying that 25 to 35 foot setback. And that's another five feet. So you're. That's another five feet. So now I'm 20 feet to the west line at the back edge of the pool. So I initially was thinking, let's keep it here. Let's now go into the no disturbance zone. And that would be 15 by 20 foot pool, but it would occupy all this space in here between the 25 and the 35. And uh, this is the only legal part of the pool that would fall into all the setbacks. It's not much of a pool if that's where you had to put it. Yeah. 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 Like, well, forget yeah, like the yard tub. Yeah, it'd be a, a kiddie pool. You can almost make it like zero plastic entry. tub. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> um, I like a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, yes, is, this is kind of like a half pool. A typical pool is 20 by 40. But this is 20 by 20. So mm -hmm. And we're only going six feet deep here. Three to six. Um, Predicated on what we've done. Would it be considered past. impervious? Or would it be, it's not, well, it's capturing the water. It's not shedding it. So you don't have water running off the pool. So that would be a pervious mm -hmm. surface, right? Even on a buck run. That's always been <laughs> my question, but um, <laughs> really? Because you're not yeah. shedding Well, you know, you can... You it's can not like, infiltrating. Right, but it's... it's capturing. It, yeah, you know what? It, and you get what transpiration. Purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But you're not returning it to groundwater. So you don't have nothing. It can actually be considered just a large dry well that's mostly full of water most of the year. <laughs> Well, the dry well returns it to the ground. The pool. I mean, I have a pool, and you know, when it rains, it, the, the, I don't the, think the that's the question the here. Impervious yeah, yeah. or no? No, the problem, the problem here is this isn't it's even close. Yeah, yeah. this isn't I mean, even this close. Is I mean, we're, we're trying to come up with something creative, but I mean, we just said no to somebody or gave somebody a hard time about putting a retaining wall within yeah, the first time. So, right. this is you, this is a dry well that you just want to fill up with water three months of the year? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Well, that's, why don't you say so? That's different. <laughs> I, mean, I can't see any way to do a clay lined or liner with a detention base and a diving board on in, it. In, but, uh, in, in the other side is already up to the oh, you mean that, that was funny. Mm -hmm. structures. And so there's no one yeah. left. Can you make it a, a, a rain garden swimming pool? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you need some Japanese music. Flutes and guitar. Pianos yeah. and be very relaxing. I don't even know if you got very creative about what you could do there. I mean, you're already just a six foot pool. Yeah. Six foot deep. Yeah. Well, even if that was a above ground pool, that wouldn't make any difference. It really wouldn't in this case. Well, it would have to be round too. Obviously, yeah. you can't have a square above ground pool. Yeah. Either round or oval. Round, round, round would be a best bet for size, or oval would make it considerably but, more narrow. But with that, can you get it close? It, do you need those setbacks? Yeah, you have yeah. to. Oh, you do? Yeah. Keep people okay. from jumping Even off the ground. Even above ground. Right? <laughs> you have to well, follow the fire department. It may be as well, but it's, think it's, the fire it's, oh, it's okay. a safety for people jumping off the ground. I think they do apply. It's not. That's true. What is it? Done it many times. What's that? I'm a golden guy. I can hear, I can see Harry saying that. Can I ask a question on this here? Is the the bold line that is to the right of where you see the 98 gradient line. Is that bold line, is that the lot line, or is that the, the line to the left of that? 
we're talking here? Yes. This is the lot line. Okay. Never mind. I was going to say. This is the five foot yeah. setback. Okay. All right. There's a fence along here. Fence corner here. That's how we're proposing to close the pool. I was looking at perhaps that bold line to the right. And they could take and turn the, make a rectangular pool to the side of the house. Up here? Yeah. A fence is considered a permanent structure, right? We, but we allow. Temporary? It, it probably, it, it's considered a structure, I would say, with, with how we look at our um, definitions, which we basically think everything's a structure. I mean, I'm just telling you what it is. I'm not sure. saying this particular city commission, but when, when people ask me anything that is a, a, an assemblance of parts is a structure. So that's how we're defining it. But this, this commission and other commissions have allowed fences right up to the edge of a wetland. So well, that's clearly way inside the 20. Right. Well, no, 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 right up to the edge of the wetland delineation, all the yeah. way up to, so oh, up to the inside the 25 foot line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, all right. Not, not, not the setbacks. So yeah. with this pool, not only is it not inside the 25 or the 35 foot area or outside of it, but the fence allows additional um, yard use within the 25 zone of natural vegetation. Yeah. So, so eventually it's, somebody's it's going to start cleaning that up more and more uh, issues. Well, but, you know, I don't know what's out there that can be um, used as mitigation, but there would have to be something very significant to Some consider. within that wetland watershed. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm I thinking think the discovery of a, you know, pterodactyl, you know, or if they agreed to go in Not even enough. Not even enough, no. That's a lot of I, I think the, I think that, you know, the house, a lot was built out and it shows on Jack's plan and he respected the 35 foot line when they did that and I think those designers came in and said, look, let's just stay away from the 35 foot line and it worked. They had to jump through a few hoops to do that. This this pool is just doesn't uh, meet those uh, regulations that they knew when they were doing, uh, I guess, the build-outs. Yeah. I so agree. this is pretty pretty new. I don't think we did that less than a year ago. That it was approved. We said yeah. can't have been couldn't have been built too long ago. That wasn't in that house very long. No, he's gone now too. Yeah, he's even, even there. He built that outdoor deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Okay. Hmm. But the other thing I was looking at is, I mean, it doesn't help. But um, <laughs> we did attach the pool to the house, respect to the 15 foot here. I, I, if I was allowed to go up into here, I could get a 12 by 20 rectangular pool right in here, and still have five feet around it. You need to turn it sideways. You need to stay out of the 35 foot, or at least stay out way. of the. I mean, if you could, you know, 28 feet. Can you well, stay 28 feet? What if I went away? this way? What if I went away? this way? That's great. That would be great. Because I don't, I don't have to. If I attach it to that, well, I still have the 15 foot here. So that means I have a little pool this bit. No, I'm talking still, sauna now. Yeah, now we're sauna. Well, you almost have just a large sauna right there. Yeah, it's only six right. foot deep. Right, six foot. It's a walking pool, 20 by 20. But it's there now. So it's usually you're walking into the pool of a normal size pool. It's, it's just a difficult site. Like you said, it was built out before you closed this. That's why I'm here. Yeah. I have to, I don't want to, you know, spend the client's money if, um, yeah. if there's just not a possibility. I'm having a hard time. What do they think of a water park kind of a thing? <laughs> yeah. Just jets. Oh, no little, pool, but just yeah, jets. Just a little patio with some water. You can move it back. There's no like setbacks the on those. The Jesse <laughs> Jets with that squirt. There's no way to get, so I guess you're, if, you're, if you attach it to the house, you have to bring it over. That doesn't work? If you attach? Well, there, if I attach it to the house and then go for a variance to get inside the foot setback. Why is it attaching it to the house? Because now it's part of the house. Right. right. And you, and need the house, 50, you need the, the 15, 15 foot. foot setback. How much do you have there now? Well, five, right? 
I got five here. Yeah. Fifteen's right here. I think this is like 17 feet or something right here. But that says 34 feet. Where's it that? It says right here. 34 feet? Oh, uh, no. That's not it? Sure. It's All right, so let's say that's... No, that's the patio space. No, I don't know what that is. It's more than that. Yeah, I mean, if the house, you check look where the 20, 20 foot. If you attach it to the house, so cool, I mean, and go for a variance for the 15 foot, and still hold the five there, then you can get a pool like this. And I think that's the only way you can do it. That's the only way. You attach it to the house and go for a variance on the side, and then you're closer. Well, I thought you could attach it to the And then I would attach what? Try and hold the pool. Please, four feet. They're talking here. about attaching it to the house. I'm on. Very just from what I've known about that's people that have pools and why they're I mean, then you can bring it down and you reduce it and you can be well, like that 30 foot area. I could stay out of this. Yeah. And bring it all down it's here. a safety thing. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is this but thing here? Is that... It, it, it truly is keeping a bunch of the pools like, from structures. That, that's, that was because that, that's yes, always that's been a concern. Patio that has the but structure overhead. So this is open. You know, they wouldn't let you connect garages to houses through breezeways if it was a concern. I think for like the fire department or something like that. Just bring this half down. Yeah, because the pool's probably not going to catch on fire. They're going to be concerned with the house. But I don't know that. Not the pool. I wouldn't bet my life that I know that that's. I think he's saying 15 feet because that's what it is for an open pool. Probably an in ground pool. I'm assuming an above ground pool has the same safety consideration. It's moving into that spot. Right. I would. Right. I don't bet on it. I would bet on it. All down. It, it seems yeah, reasonable. We've attached it. You need to be defeated. Well, anyway, when you have a detached structure, you can be five feet away from the lot. Yeah. Yeah. If the attached structure has to be 15. So it was attached to the house, oh, and right. it had to be 15, 15 feet. feet. Right. So it'd be kind of 10 and under. <laughs> so the pool could only be 20 and then go this way. Well, the pool would be, yeah, you're right. The pool would be from here to here. So they're talking about a variance for the 15 foot. Right. right now, I'm 15 here, but if I can get relief up to five, well, then I could be inside of here. And that's what you have to do. And to take I, this whole thing and slide it in. And I think the engineer. I think the at least I know I would be if you know, we got to it and there was a point where we're cutting into. And what? I didn't go in. If yes. I wanted to have a gig here, four feet <laughs> wide, I'm, I'm over a little. It's great. Four and a half feet. Uh, I, you could find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For that. I, I, I can't speak for everybody in the commission, but I'm outside the 35. Does that require a notice of intent? We love these, but I personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this would still. This, will, always have a notice this will still be a notice of intent, but because you're still in the hundred. Anyway, I, I, yeah. at least I, I, a lot of the stuff is done. Done though. I mean, we accepted another pool that was like a plan from Jack Sullivan, which the same thing you're doing. With a modified pool on top of it and the bathroom was in the tent. So it could be something that you can bring forward. Um, you just have to you have to get but, but we have to get out of the thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean if we're out of the thirty five you can consider it. If you're out of the 35, if you're, out of the 35 you got it. You're, you're golden. I mean, if if there's if I'm over a foot or two just to get around the corner here, then you, you're for a patio. That's I think you're fine. To me, yeah. To me, I, at least I, I could find a way. Like to even if I went like this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this space, I could find a way to make that. Could, may I ask? This is kind of irrelevant because this is a it's separate of this issue, but. Is there an actual setback for how far an in-ground pool, in pool must be from a house? You said making it, you said attaching it to the house. I don't understand that. Well, pull up this. I understand for the, in here. for the other 15-foot setback. There's a document but in here. It's, it, I, say that it's there. Read this. Well, I'm cheap. Can you read it? <laughs> well, I we just want to know. I, I, I didn't want to get off track yet. Is there a, a minimum distance that the pool has to be from a house? Yes, 10 feet. That's Normally. all? Normally, 10 feet, yes. 10 feet, okay. Pool cannot be any closer. A shed, a house. You have to have some ten feet separation. Okay. But it does say, right? Say. So it says any accessory structure that is less than ten feet from a principal structure on a lot shall be considered attached to the principal structure and shall be subject to the dimensional re limits and requirements of that principal. Structure. But so if you're ten, so that's what I'm looking at. But so if you're ten feet away. Then, then I'm satisfying the town. But yeah. if I'm inside the town, 
given this statement right here, and this is right out of the but zone. So a pool has to be outside of 10 feet, though. I thought you just Okay. Well, I don't think so. So you'd be looking for a variance. Be, I would have to go before um, both the variance to right? attach the pool to the house. So Kindly Drive is having a pool that was attached to the house. Okay. So they just met the 15 foot setback. Okay. On the side of the house. Okay. So I don't know if you did a variance to attach the pool to the house. I mean, it sounds like it's it's happened but before. Uh, but they, I, I think I was under the So it has to have the 15 foot setback. I was under the same side of that. Was a safety, yeah. safety item, not a. And then you would have to go for a variance to get relief on the 15. On the 15 foot, foot setback. Mm -hmm. That would be, I guess, the only path <laughs> to compliance. I would say. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay. I can't. I'll, I'll be very surprised. If that includes pools. <laughs> but, anyway, but I think that would end up being a twelve. That paragraph. This paragraph? Yeah. This yeah. did you find out what is did you find the uh, spot where it says what exactly is an accessory structure and pools? This this it? statement is directly pulled. This is accessory structures, all of these statements. It's all about accessory structures. And you know that a pool Sheep. is an accessory structure. Yeah, it's just about pools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is like my fifth or tenth pool in town. In town. Well, the question, I guess, is what supplants what? Does that supplant the ten-foot setback, or does the ten-foot setback supplant that? Meaning, you know, you've got a what? Well, one's for safety. The other one's, I think, clearly for garages and sheds and the like. Out buildings, back buildings. Well, the other park. thing we haven't even looked at is uh, lot coverage. Right. Um, but given that half the lot is wetlands. Lot coverage is because you just infiltrate the difference that you can't make. So it's like 15,000 15, square feet or 25 percent, and then if you're over that, you just infiltrate. Okay. So it's not a, it's not a barrier anymore. Okay. Um, well, just I have to explore further the, the idea of moving the pool with it with inside 10 feet. If that's a possibility, that statement seems to indicate to me that you could, which would essentially attach the pool. This is if you're adding an addition to the to the house. Mm -hmm. uh, unless it was an indoor pool, I don't. I can't imagine. And again, this is purely opinion. I I I should probably keep a mush up. Unless it was covered, so people couldn't jump in it. I can't imagine it would be able to allow me to attach the house. Well, it sounds like it happened at Kylie though. Alley was right up against. It was part of the house. You could walk out of the house, and it was right to it. I mean, I don't. I don't feel like really. Yeah. Kylie, the town from the jacks and the barriers. And not then. Right if that's the case, front. then you may be correct. Kylie, I don't remember that having fifteen foot setback. It's there. Right? They might have got it when we were going for a variance. I'm not sure. I don't have my other. Uh, yeah, because Kylie was thumb drive, so I can't pull yeah. it out. I mean, remember how? how well, if how that's the case, and you can move, pull that close to the house and get outside the 35 foot barrier, you should be on easy street. <laughs> Kind of well, the one where they're basically making like the family town between all of them. Yes, okay. Put the 15 foot set. But that had to have the 15 feet. Oh, remember? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They came back to us and said this is why we changed. Right. Yeah, 15 feet. 5 feet off this line. Because it was part of the construction. I'd start there. But that would have to go to the ZBA for that, right? Yeah. But we'd be okay here. All right. Yep. Okay. Gives us some direction. Good luck. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Um, next item is a request to remove the Beaver Dam near Track Road, Town DPW, and we've got uh, some photos and, and locations. Is this in the same you, area that they're always like, Do you remember the Beaver Dam that used to be in the rotary? That Route 129 circle? N no. This Across the from the Mandarin? The that goes into yeah. it. People I know that were on Bay State Road behind there? Yeah. Their cellars were flooding because of the Beaver Dam. And there was a real brew going on between the environmentalists and friends of animals the track road. and guys that wanted to pull that out. Yeah. The, actually, down the construction so track, track, track road, road is, Cumberland Farms is right there on Lime Road. Yeah. Where's the dam in relation to that? The, the dam. Oh, I see. I see where the that's Cumberland Farm. The dam's right there where it says Locust. There's the rotary. Yep. 
got it. And then here's the dam. I'm going to do that trick that Mike showed me. So why did I want to get rid of the dam? Did I do it upside down? I think it's upside down. Oh, man. Whoa. Do it two more times. There you go. Why did I want to get rid of the dam? Um, <laughs> I'm assuming it's causing flooding. I went, I went down there, and it's... Backing things it's, up? Yeah. That <laughs> water, with all the rain we were getting, it's it's within 20 feet of some of the houses. It's very flat around there, so it's, it's really edging up. As a matter of fact, it was like three weeks ago we went out and took these pictures, and it's just taken a long time to get a, a trapper who um, the health department approved. Uh, so, you know, the second step is to remove the beaver dam. How do they remove the beaver dam? Get rid well, of the beavers first. They travel yeah. the beavers. Yeah, but then they, well, and then they, then so they, they come with the, well, don't they come with usually an excavator and just kind of pull right yeah. out? An excavator with a thumb and they just grab it and pull yeah. up all the... Articulate it thumb. It's full of rocks. Well, there's actually a sequence that has to be um, mainly uh, it's yeah, pro there's some uh, <laughs> sequence that you have to do. So you're really only supposed to let this the stream or the the impoundment down uh, gradually. Mm -hmm. So it's a one foot first step, one foot by one foot chunk out of it. Um, if you don't do that, there's a lot of other animals that are going to be impacted by the water level dropping in an instant. Mm. I've seen this happen before, where towns go in and or even the mistake, they they think they're taking on the small piece, but then all of a sudden the whole, the whole thing, thing lets go. Apart. And let's say if it was winter, I mean, all that shelter and all those, um, you know, the and the yeah, the huts and whatnot, people, they just get froze, frozen out and it just happens, they can't find anything else. But when you let it down slowly, what ends up happening, if they can't uh, rebuild the dam, they move on. and and. This is not going to have any more beavers, or maybe well, maybe it might have a few, but they will move on. But uh, I, and I have to ask. I'm assuming that the reason why this has become a problem is because of the recent rise in the water. No, that's a major drainage area from back of the Home Depot. And so this has been a problem area. for a long time. We always have to keep this clean. It can never be. They, a dam can't go there. How and long has it been there? Is it new? This is the second time we've taken one out in the same location. Kind of yeah. This is yeah. Have you? So beavers were trapped the last time. It, it was in within my time here, so it was in the last five years or three years. And they take out the they take out that debris. There's actually a, a, couple years ago a tree in it. front of that picture. They're going to grab that too. It was a couple of years ago. We did it on the other side, closer to DPW, didn't we? We did one down by the DPW garage also. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was. Uh, as big an effort as this. Yeah. I, mean, I think they had more time and it wasn't causing a problem. This is definitely, when you walk down there, you you, know, you can see the water. When I was there, I don't know what it looks like today. The water was within 20 feet of some guy's house. It was pretty flat to his house. I was just amazed that they weren't really just hauling town up and screaming. So. Is that what they do with the bin, bin, dam and the rotary? It was one in there years ago. So the typical way to, to you know pull a dam out is that um, you got to get rid of the beavers, mm -hmm. um, and you can't take your problem to somewhere else. So you have to kill the beavers. They're all euthanized or whatever. Usually the trapper uses conibear traps, which uh, takes care of that part. And then that's a health department um, permit that's signed by the health department. So that's up to them. Conservation gets involved and health when we're taking down the dam because you're actually changing habitat. And that's our role, is we protect habitat. So that's why the policy is to take down just a little bit, let it ease out, and then uh, go the from there. Spillway. So. Can I ask a question? Where, where this is the second time this has happened there, I would assume it's likely to happen again. Is there any kind of preemptive or, or is a device Make, called like maintenance the, uh, kind of your deceiver program? No, just to go in there on a regular basis, and when they, you can see they're starting to build it, just take out what they're starting to build. Well, they're very active, and they would yeah, just it would yeah, be yeah. An, a daily process. Yeah. We've had neighbors uh, in in the last town I worked in that had a culvert, and they had to go out there every single morning 
and take sticks out of it. And sometimes they couldn't get to it for a couple of days, and you would you would really be working on it. These guys are tenacious. These, these beavers don't have a job. This they, is their they, job. They, they, <laughs> yeah, but I, I didn't realize they were that that. No, no, it's very fast. When it came to yeah, they have babies. Mm. If if you took a one foot chunk out of there. Um, it would be filled the next night if the beavers aren't there. So it, it's tough. But if you took the whole thing down, then they would build it up slowly, maybe maybe a couple months and, or maybe a couple weeks until it got up there, you know. And there's no outpacing them, huh? <laughs> there, no, there's a thing you could do. You, they do this beaver deceiver. So what it is is the, the water, the vibration of the water that kind of brings them in. And what you do is you put this pipe, you lift up a certain section of the dam, and you put this pipe in there like a culvert, and you run it just a few feet out on the downstream side, but on the upstream side, you want to have it like 20 feet away, sure. and it's siphoning in the water, and they swim right past it to the dam, and uh, you know they keep, you know they keep piling up the, the debris and whatnot and the and the sticks, but it never, you know, you set the height because it, sure. it's a straight run, right. and then it's an elbow up to where you want the level to be. Yep. We asked them about this here, but. Um, the health department felt that uh, this time to remove it, and the engineering department said that this is just a major area for drainage, and they could never accept, uh, you know, the, the beaver deceiver here. So it might be a fight for the future, but I don't think the health department would take it up. Yeah, I mean this this, but I can't really speak for them. I didn't think the beaver deceivers. Work that way. Highly, yeah, yeah I've heard. I actually installed one with Skip Lyle uh, up in Boxford, and what the problem was, uh, they so those sections of of pipe they were using that corrugated. It's like culvert, but it's very uh, light. So if it was if it was more substantial and had that rubber ring in it, you could stick it together. The problem was each section was was tied together with um, zip ties and the water was rushing through the zip ties so it would bring the beaver right over to those and they would gnaw at the zip ties. They were also white not black so they could see them underwater. So they would eat those and it would open up and then the suction would come right in there and between the what, 12 foot length. So we were, we were getting all this damage so we kept having to work on it and work on it and work on it. And when they find these areas that are the water sucking in they just stuff that with sticks and debris. So everything's getting stuffed up, and usually that pipe that I talked about, well, not usually, but every time you have to run that pipe in that elbow, right at the elbow, you build a cage around that, and there's a separation like three feet, four feet around that, and they actually try to pack in mud around the cage. Yeah, it's impossible. So it it's not without maintenance. There's a lot of maintenance involved, and so usually a determination to say yes that'll work is for the DPW department whoever to have access to the spot. This spot actually comes with an access road. So they can drive right up to this, bring yeah. equipment right in there. So if it was a maintenance issue, they could get there relatively easy. But it's it's something that they don't do. No, I mean there's a place I go fishing at Harold Parker and there's, there's a pond with a beaver dam at the top and the bottom. And last winter, the top beaver dam blew out. It was about this tall. It was at least, it was a good four feet. And the whole thing was gone. It was just a rushing river coming through there. Three weeks later, four feet tall. Yeah. I mean, it's just, this is in the winter. Mm. It's supposed to be sleepy. <laughs> so, uh... It's a hot drain. Yeah, it's too bad, but that's a that's a huge wetland complex, and there's probably more way out. So, you know, each time there's a hut, there's kids, there's parents, and it, it this increase, 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 and it just multiplies each year. And so, in a few years, they'll be back to this spot again, maybe even next year. And this drains so much of the town. I mean, this is the Saugus River watershed. So this is all the way up to Pinevale. Right, so Walkersbrook Drive is getting this area. It's this all is going through. past the DPW. Yeah. This is going over by. Uh, yeah, it's even Timber. Oh, what's that name of that road? Uh, I forgot the name. Um, up by your house. What's that road as you come around the corner? So that complex you're on. You're on. You don't have to say your road, but I don't know that. Ash Tree. Yeah. 
those, those the back roads with a with a wetland complex is in, in back of your house, so it's draining that yeah. area. Too. Ash Street, off Ash Street, cross. Yeah. Cross. somewhere else. Cross. Ash Street, cross, Sorry. yeah, cross. This is the cross street yeah. area, so it's pretty big. There's a guy up in Maine that makes these. He's a guy who's retired, um, retired sprinkler uh, fitter, and he actually welds them together. He welds big T together and he comes up and he's got a, a vent up the top and he's got a siphon on the, the bottom of it. And what he does is he has it so that there's a T on the beaver pond uphill side of it that allows the water to draw down in and then the siphon is below the level of the water because it goes as an invert on the other side of the, the dam. So the water as it seeks its own level does not drain below the invert so as it comes through the, the, the dam it comes out the other side of the dam and then comes uphill and goes 10 or 12 feet but all these sections are all put together with the big clamps that you see on sprinkler pipe, those big orange clamps that all bolt together. Mm -hmm. So you can bolt it together and then when it's all done, you can unbolt it and take it away. It's all welded together, but it's it's like six inch, you know, sprinkler pipe. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're hauling all this stuff out. I mean, like you said, this stuff is accessible. Sometimes right. you're hauling it through the woods. Well, you know? these are the sections are no longer than eight feet. Yeah. You just put them together in there, you know, substantial. Michael had one in the back back of his property, and uh, the uh, <laughs> the beavers found the suction, and they just mashed that up with sticks and mud, and so they ended up putting a cage around it. Do we need to uh, vote on this? Yeah, just uh, approve. Make a motion uh, to approve the removal, the removal of the beaver dam. Second. Second. All those in favor? Bob, are you abstaining? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, okay. Not at all. He's totally for... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it's too bad, but... I know, but... Yeah. And then the last item is... Um, Chuck went out and took a look at these uh, trees on Eastway. The Janet Monog Monaco. Yeah. And, yeah. And I guess uh, they're very close to the house. Or... Well, very close to the house, and there was a couple in, on conservation land. So um, for the new tree policy, you can see on the back that the, the furthest one back that says drop on the left-hand side, they're unable to uh, bring those out of the wetland or the, at least the conservation land, it's not wetland right there. Um, so they want to leave those on the ground. And the rest of them, they're going to be able to pull out of there. Were those big cherry trees? <coughs> Do you remember? They were big trees. And they were dead. All huh? of them were big. Mm. The cherry trees weren't that, that big. The white pine was. Yeah, for sure. Is this the, uh, anyway, that's that's a he. Who is, 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 is that an arborist? Oh, no, that's the arborist, yeah. yeah. Have we worked with him before? Work. No. What's MCA? Massachusetts Certified yeah. Arborist, yeah. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. That's what I came up with. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to call me the day they're there, um, or the day before. We're going to go down and just if those trees that he says is going to drop. Uh, can be taken out, he will. If uh, they can't, we'll decide on it together. I, just, I don't remember ever seeing anybody give a, their actual, an actual certification on this. Fine. Sounds good. Uh, uh, do we need. No, that goes underneath our tree replacement policy. policy. Yeah. We don't need to vote. Um, do we have anything else, Chuck? Any minutes? <coughs> yeah, we did. I sent out the minutes. If anyone had a chance, they were prepared when did you by probably 5.15, 5.30. Ready? You can wait till the next meeting. <laughs> 5.44. What are you guys doing? Excuse me. Uh, 5.44. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, I know. Wasn't it 4, 3, 4? I was four. getting off my train at 5.44. Yeah. I depend on your uh, commute to uh, look at the minutes. 
but let's just put them off till the next meeting. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, and there's one it was one question I think everyone out on TV and land is uh, dying to know, and that is if there's any uh, romance left in the conservation commission. And why do I ask? Is because one of our meeting falls on Valentine's Day, and we need to know. <laughs> we gotta bring in Valentine cards and hearts and flowers. Well, and we. <laughs> And we need to you know whether we're going like to get all of our over Valentine's. <laughs> I, I, I need to know whether we're going to cancel that meeting. No, and I don't have think it on the seventh of the twenty-first. The seventh being Ash Wednesday, or have that meeting on Valentine's Day, disappointing our loved ones back at home. It's maybe completely up to you, but I think my wife might have a say in it. Just oh, what did your wife say already? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us? <laughs> I was actually wait, I was actually hoping Mike would have a stand here since he's newly uh, uh, new dad. You can show you all over, right? Yeah, 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 right. You can right. do all <laughs> kinds of romance. We had our last Valentine's Day for a long time, okay? <laughs> 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 Recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but Cupid was an art conservationist. So <laughs> he does collect his arrows after he shoots. Yes. He's he's tidy and neat yes. and respectful for the habitat. That's uh, that would be a Wednesday night, uh, Valentine's Day. Actually, it's up to you guys. I'd I'd, I'd say yes. That gives me an excuse. Used to not I have already heard do from, something uh, silly now. Scrooge I'm kidding. doesn't bother me. Uh, <laughs> doesn't bother bother me. me. <laughs> no, that sorry, <laughs> Chuck. Mit mitigate the impact by bringing in a rose bush to the meeting. I guess. I guess the answer is <laughs> there is no. There is no romance. love on this commission. There's no romance <laughs> left in this on this commission. However, if you're going to come here the with flowers, you make sure you don't bring them in your house first, because if your wife sees you walking out the door with them, you're in trouble. Okay. What do you mean? One of the worst days to go out oh, and that Day. Yeah. 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 That was it. I have no more uh, I have no my my comedy show's over, so that's it. Wasn't there another conflict? Another No, we straightened that out with uh, with Julie. So um, oh. I have the conflicts here. So we'll uh, July we figured out and um, the other one, which uh, whether it was a holiday or not, was we were paid to, to go on that day. So it ended up just being uh, just that that black spot on our agenda, which is Valentine's Day. We're which starting. We don't care about anyways. We're starting to get to the time of year where we only have one meeting a month, right? No, no. So I think November, December, November. Consistently next month. year we actually have two meetings in November. I have the. I'll put this in the. Next one. I'll put this in the next uh, distribution packet, but we have two meetings in November. It just worked out that way, and one in December. This year we only have one in November. One in November mm -hmm. on the 8th. One in December, yeah. One in December. Did we move? I'm not sure why I have. I've got it on the 6th instead of the 13th. I'll have to look into that. They may have to file a hardship. November is his wife's birthday, so if oh, we're really? going to be here then and on Valentine's Day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, have next we ever meeting, I'm feedback? Out. Do we have enough people? Well, I didn't get any word from Anika, so I I'm knew not Nick sure. wasn't going to be here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the 11th. Yeah. I'll be here. There's. I'll be here. Yeah. Bob. There should be. Yeah, Bob and uh, Dave. Okay. So okay. Are you traveling? Yes. You going to get some uh, good old fashioned uh, bittersweet or whatever that was, uh, Japanese knotweed or? Yeah, yeah. When well, we were yeah. kids, we used to eat that. Well, eat up. Which one? Well, that Japanese Asian bittersweet weed. weed just doesn't just go like away, does it? No. I mean, that'll, that'll yeah. kill a tree. It's just, I mean. I mean, it looks like a two bud. You yeah, clean it out in the spring, and next year you get it all back. It's crazy. Right? right? Yeah, you just have to. It's like cut them each year. I mean, I don't even pull them down anymore. Just, just kind of meet you. Do you ever, do you have any way of knowing how many people actually watch this or turn their TVs on and 
it's the highest rated yeah, rating TV for the show. I didn't, know if, I didn't know if RTV had a way of monitoring the... Creeping up on Seinfeld, actually. Well, it has to do with how many people uh, monitor the... Um, to see how many people look on you. The program, and we usually have two, where other committees only have one person monitoring. I went to the library one day, and the librarian looked at me and she said, Oh, you're on the Conservation Commission. <laughs> it's like... Oh. What did you do? <laughs> I felt like saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I would say, in all honesty, <laughs> our our viewership is... It seems like maybe our significant others every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure we're here. Yeah. It, it's sure. a shock when I, I, I it's like, oh, there we are. Oh. <laughs> I say, some some people say it. They call up and I, they say, oh, I say you know, Well, I would think that would be a feeler for you to see how many people call in and say, hey, I saw the show last night and they either like it or dislike it or have an issue with something. I saw or, the show. <laughs> the show. Well, I, I mean, it's, well, it's a show, right? I mean, it, a, it is a show. A, a spot or whatever you call it. It's a really, really big I don't show. Think, I don't think Nielsen calls Chuck and lets him go with the ratings out. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion to Yes. I would second that. If anyone has any, any comments or suggestions, any? please call the conservation office. All those in favor of adjourning? Right. You can reach me at ctroni.ca.us. Thank you very much. Thanks.